All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. All right. Happy Wednesday to everybody yes. that's watching with us tonight. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Amen. Yes. I hope you guys are having a great night so far. Like I said, I think last week, like the nights are getting here so much faster and it's almost time for fall back, Pastor Larry. So I'm not going to know how to act. I don't know about <laughs> you. <laughs> we have uh, our neighbors mowing right now, too. So I hope you guys don't hear like a lawnmower in the background. I don't think y'all will. But yeah, he, he's, he's not supposed to be mowing. He's already supposed to be inside ready for church. church. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we love him, though. He's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a good man. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Amen. Well, I hope you guys are doing well and I hope that you're having a blessed week so far. I love Wednesday nights. Wednesday night services, Pastor Larry. Amen. It's just like a midweek refresher. So it's always good to see you guys, and we're looking forward to seeing you face to face, man, on Sunday. Finally, be right? like Moses, man. Moses said he wanted to see God face to face. Face to face. Yes, <laughs> that's right. We're gonna be back in church finally. Yes, yes finally. But it's this Sunday, and from then on, you know, hopefully. So, but we're looking forward to it, amen. But you, we're this is our last uh, live service from our house, Pastor Larry. It's our last live service. Yes. So. We need to go out with a bang, yeah, <laughs> which I know we, we are. If we ever have to do a live service here, uh, oh, well, we'll be doing live on our other page. New, New Covenant, Covenant Way. Way. Yeah. Yeah. True. So y'all might want to watch on there. And uh, so y'all be a part of that. I do want to make uh, an announcement before we go forward uh, tonight is I want to encourage everybody that's watching and everybody that is making plans to come to church, uh, to make, I'm sorry about that. I just, I felt short of breath for a second. Uh, I want everybody, if you can, if you're deciding to come back to church, Pastor Jamie and I are asking you to make sure that you make some time, uh, before Sunday, mm -hmm. you can do it as early as tomorrow to start, uh, prepare to see the guidelines. There will be guidelines, uh, on the church's page. So just remember that, you guys, everybody that's watching, if you are making plans to come back to church with yes. us, I know there's quite a bit of people coming back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got a lot of people saying they're coming back. So if you're going to be coming back starting tomorrow sometime, maybe in the morning, maybe sometime in the evening, just know starting tomorrow that the guidelines will be posted. So we're asking everybody to make sure that they read the guidelines before you come back to church yeah. so that you don't walk into church saying, well, I didn't know, or uh, how, where was I supposed to find that yeah. stuff? It's all going to be posted starting tomorrow. I'm going to post it uh, tomorrow sometime in the morning or during the day. So go on the church page, this page that you're on now, mm -hmm. and make sure that you read the guidelines. You can read them in less than a minute. They're not even as many as we had last time. Yeah. But uh, so just be prepared, and uh, we're asking everybody who reads the guidelines and decides to come to church to please cooperate with us uh, in following the guidelines so that we can have an enjoyable and welcoming service for all those that come back. Yeah. I also, I was going to say, Pastor Larry, I'm going to try to uh, not try tomorrow. I'm going to put it on the, uh, the church uh, webpage as well. New covenant church Ocampo. I'll have the guidelines put there on the homepage if you want to go there and see it. So sometime tomorrow, I'll have that up. So, uh, and yeah, we got to make sure that we stick to the guidelines as we go back. Cause, uh, you know, it's sad, but we're, we're going back, but it's not a free for all Pastor Larry. That's so we right. have those guidelines to, to abide by. So to make sure that we're all kept safe and healthy, uh, as we're going back. So just, uh, you know, just, you guys have worked with us and cooperated with us so long, you know, with our decision to not be at church just yet. So we just ask that y'all continue to do that as we go back to church with the guidelines in place. Amen. Yes. It's good. Yeah. All right, guys, let's pray. And then we're going to get right into this because I don't want to waste your time. Amen. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, Jesus for all name, those Lord. that are watching tonight. Father, I pray that you bless the word that we're about to uh, study and partake in. And Lord, I pray that you would just speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray that what yes. people here today would encourage them. Lord, as we always ask you speak through Pastor Jamie and I, let our mouths be clay lord in your hand to mold them and to speak what you would have us to say lord for your people and for all those that are watching lord whether they're watching live tonight or they will watch later on lord i pray that they would be blessed and thank encouraged you, and we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives in jesus, jesus name. name amen 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 yes. amen 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 all right guys if you have your bibles go with me to isaiah uh 54 Isaiah 54 is where we're going to look at tonight. And uh, I believe that 
what we're going to share with you guys is going to be encouraging. Amen. You know, last, um, well, this past Saturday, Jamie and I did a, like a, I guess you said like a quinceanera or something yeah, along the something lines like that, for yeah. one of our church members, Trish, who y'all all know, Trish. Yeah. Uh, that goes to our church. We, her, her daughter had like a, uh, 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 like a quinceanera get together. Right. And she asked if we would go and speak. And so, you know, I was thinking about what I wanted to say at that quinceanera. And through this thought and through this meditation, this message came to my heart, mm-hmm. Pastor Jamie. Okay, yeah. And so I told Pastor Jamie, I says, I'm going to share something with the church. I said, the next time, you know, I, I get right. to uh, lead the sermon. So this is something that God put on my heart this weekend, and uh, I, I've been so excited to share it with you guys, and I hope that it encourages you because I really believe that it's going to challenge you and hopefully, um, you know, encourage you to open yourself up. Right. Open yourself up to Amen. more. Open yourself up to more of what God has. Yes. Amen? Yes. So Isaiah 54, I hope you all are there. You should be by now. Isaiah 54. Starting with verse 2, and we're going to read 2 and 3, just those two verses. Okay. And it says, Enlarge the place of your tent, and let and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not despair. Lengthen your cords. Now notice what he says, guys. He says, Enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Mm. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the to the right and to the left. And your Mm. descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Amen. So what is so God is speaking to Israel here. Okay. And we know that this is the old Testament book of Isaiah. And at this time, the children of Israel are God's people are really, they're barren. They're not really, uh, being blessed, Pastor Jamie. Right. They're not really experiencing the goodness of God mm. because of their disobedience, because right. of them not being obedient to what the Lord says. Yeah. But at the end of this, uh, but in, in this uh, chapter, I'm sorry, God tells them, God says, you know what? I want you to enlarge your tents. I want you to expand. In other words, what God is saying to them is this. Get ready. Get ready. Get, get ready, ready to be blessed. <laughs> yeah. I sound like T.D. Jake. <laughs> yeah, get, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> you know what? God is saying enlarge your tents. Enlarge your place so that he can bless you. And what I feel like the Lord wanted me to share with you guys, and it's, it's a very simple word. Yeah. What I felt God said to me in my heart was that it's time for you and I as believers to begin to expand and begin to open up our heart to be able to receive more of what God has. Yes. Jamie. Yes. I, believe I, that. I, I felt like the Lord told me this. The problem, guys, is not God's distribution. Mm-hmm. God is a distributor, right, Pastor? Right. Jamie? Am yeah. I using that word yeah. right? He, he gives, gives it out. Yeah. Yeah. God gives out. God. Right. God is always handing out good things. Mm-hmm. So His distribution is not the problem. Right. You know, I wanted to say that this is kind of funny. <laughs> Y'all, I, I, I had to share this story. Right. <laughs> but. I bought a Nintendo Switch, which I all know that. I've been oh, playing yeah. the heck out of that. Me and Jamie. <laughs> Jamie's been right there next to me playing. I'm getting addicted, He's too. He's getting addicted, too. <laughs> but, uh, Pastor Jamie, during this pandemic, I was reading on the Nintendo, uh, like, a gaming, uh, we- like a gaming website. Right. And they were saying, guys, that there was a shortage of Nintendo Switches. With everything that's been going on with the pandemic, Nintendo hasn't been able to have their employees come in. Uh, to work yeah. because everybody's on lockdown in Makes China yeah. and things like that. So there's been a shortage of Nintendo Switches right. being able to be produced. And I thought that that was kind of interesting because I felt like that was another confirmation of this message that yeah. we, we always think that God gives us the short end of the stick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like God is the one that 
you know, is not giving. You know, right. the reason why I don't have what I what I need is because God hasn't given it to me. Yes. You know, right, the reason right. why I'm not healed is because God hasn't given it to me. That's true. And yeah. what I want to encourage you with, guys, is what I said a second ago. God's distribution is not the issue. Right. What the problem is, guys, is our ability to receive what God is distributing. Right. A right. lot of us have such a small minded faith Right. Our our ability to receive the big that God has is limited. Right. How can God give you a big blessing when you have a small mustard seed of faith? Pastor right. Jamie? Right. Yes. Yeah. I was. Uh, I remember Pastor Larry when um we we used to go to uh, Lakewood Church. I remember Joel Steen kind of preaching like a message like this before, and and uh, he was saying basically the same thing. You know how. So many times, like in our minds as Christians, when we pr- like, for for example, whenever we pray, we pray uh, as if we are trying to limit our prayers because we're not sure if God will be able to meet those requests mm, or not. That's good. That's and good. so, like, we're afraid to ask for big things. You know, we're afraid to ask for the big blessings, the audacious blessings, the the, the ridiculous blessings that that God wants to give us. You know, so we pray for. For example, like a car or something like that. Lord, I need a new car. You know, I'll take anything. I'll take a broken down, you know, <laughs> three wheeled vehicle that that may or may not get me to my place of employment. Come on. But really, God wants us to be blessed better than that. Right. I, I believe He does. You know, I'm. I, some people say like when we preach like that, Pastor Larry. Well, you're being like a prosperity preacher, or you're preaching like that God is a material God, or any or something like that. It, it's it's not that. It's just that. God is he he owns everything and he doesn't want his children to suffer you know and he and I believe that if we have if we have that strong faith and we really and truly believe that God wants us you know to to experience those those good blessings you know not just not just a broken down car but a good reliable car you know not just uh another lease but maybe my own house you know not just a raise yeah. But uh, a promotion at my job or, or a on. different job that pays me a lot more. You know, why yes. can't we believe that way? Why can't we think that way? Not just, uh, you know, a little healing here and there. You know, we'll pray for like headaches and stuff like that, Pastor Larry, to go away. But whenever uh, a really uh, serious sickness hits our body, it's like it's almost like we're, we're it's it's not that we're scared to pray about it. It's just that we're not sure if God will do it or not. Mm. Because we're not acting and we're, we're really, we're just not acting in faith, you know, but, but I, I agree with what you're saying though, Pastor Larry, you know, God wants us to believe him for the big things because he is a big God. And it doesn't matter like what problem or what kind of issue you're going through. God is always going to be bigger than your issue, no matter what your I, issue on, is. Amen. Amen. You know, and, and Pastor Jamie, I felt like what God, what I felt like the Lord was showing me as well is that so many times, guys, we feel that God can only do what's in reach. Yeah. You know, like, right. you know, God's not going to give me that, 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 you know, that management position yeah. at my job because I'm not trained. Yeah. You know, I don't have the skills. I, I didn't go to college. I, I didn't yeah. get that certificate. Right. I didn't I didn't take those classes. Right. So what we do, guys, is we limit God yeah. in, in our ability to see his blessings or if God does bless us, we believe it's going to be within this certain yeah. circumference. It's like in other if, words, it's, like, it's going to be limited. Yeah. So, sorry, Pastor Larry. It's like if if we can't see beyond that then it's like we don't think god can either you know like Mm -hmm. if we can't reach that we don't think that god can either but it it goes back to the scripture you know that you read god wants you to enlarge your tents you know he wants you to expand your mind and expand your your kingdom so to speak amen amen you know and so i think that that's what we need to do guys we need i I feel like god is just really encouraging me and encouraging y'all today is to is to believe that God wants to do the impossible. Amen. Believe that God wants to do bigger for you than what you see. Right. Believe that God can bless you beyond what your finances tell you. Yes. Believe yes. that God can heal you beyond what the doctor yes. re- re- report tells Amen. you. Amen. God can do it, guys. Right. He's, he's not limited right. to our resources. Right. And, and I love what he tells them, like you said, Pastor Jamie, in Isaiah 54 that we read. What did he say? He says, you got to enlarge your tent. That's good. Right. You got to expand. You got to, we got to be the ones, right. guys, to be able to say, Lord, 
I don't want just a handful. God, I want a barrel full. Right. God, there God, you, go. I, you know, I want a box full, whatever. Right. I'm just using a metaphor here. But God, I, I, I want you, Lord, to expand my ability to receive. Right. But, but sometimes we don't think that. We right. don't think that God can do that because we're so limited in our perspective. Well, Pastor yes. Larry, you know, God's not going to give me that brick home. I only make $1,000 a week. Yes, yeah, yeah. Pastor right. Larry, my credit <laughs> is not good, Pastor yeah. Larry. Right. Pastor Larry, the doctor said that'll never happen to me. No, yeah. guys, it doesn't matter what, what they say. It doesn't matter what your bank account says. Right. It doesn't matter what anybody says about yes. you guys. What is determining the 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 victory what's determining if you're going to see the blessing in your life is are you able to receive it amen or or, right. or do you have blocks in the way right do you have walls in the way to where you're not allowing the blessing to penetrate because you feel like no i can't receive that right no th- 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 how how is god going to do that no god can do it right but what we have to be is a people to say lord you know what god your your distribution is not the issue God, you giving me is not right. the issue. Lord, you're able to to give me more than just me paying rent. God, God, I know you want me to have a home. Lord, Lord, I know, God, that I'm always uh, struggling to pay my bills. God, but I know you want to bless me so where I have more than enough money. Come on, somebody. Right, that's it. You know, yes. you know God, God, I, I, I know that. That, that I have health issues, but God, I know that you're able to heal me completely. Yes. Come on, yes, to, to where absolutely. you feel like you're young again. Yeah. Hey, where you wake up and your back don't hurt no more. Right. <laughs> you know, when you wake up and your bones are not, you know, uh, crackling yeah. and popping like the cereal Rice Krispies. <laughs> Come on, I, I, I'm, trying to, yeah. I'm trying to get y'all pumped up tonight. I want y'all to get, y'all, get on y'all feet in the yeah. spiritual way and say, yes, I believe that, Pastor Larry. Yeah. Yes, Pastor Larry, I receive that. I, God, God, I, I know you can do it yes I, I, god is not limited by our circumstances Amen. Amen. god is limited in the fact that if he pours it out are you able to receive that's it? that's right yes i'm gonna yes. say it again god's mm. limited by if he if he pours it out are you able to receive yeah. it hallelujah to Pastor Larry, um, I, I was thinking man uh just as you were talking now uh, the lord had brought this back to my mind um uh, I don't know if you remember what, you know, when your grandpa was going through his, the cancer and things mm-hmm. like that, you know, we were all praying for him and we still are, you know, but I remember every time I would pray for him. And I think I announced this to the church a few times, like every time I was, pr- I would pray for him. I always felt led to not just pray that it would be gone, but that his, his youth would be restored, that we, he would have more energy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I just, it just now came to me now, like we can actually see that being fulfilled today, because wow, if you look yes. at him today, you know, he's not just healed and, and, and laying around the house, but he's doing a lot around the house. You know, he's climbing ladders, fixing things, and he's like he's back to him old back to his old self, you know. So I would say that's fulfillment, you know. Amen. And I, I think uh you know what you said is good, Pastor Larry. Um yeah, I was thinking of it like a car. Uh, when it, whenever you, and whenever, let's say you had a move or something like Pastor, Pastor Larry, and you invited your friend to come over and help you move. And then he gets to your place where you have to put all your stuff in his truck or something. And you know, you're, you're expecting to, that he's going to have like a van or a truck to come put on, all your stuff, on. but he shows up in a little Pinto or a little, a little, one of those little mini bug, cars bug, or something yeah. like that. And what are you going to tell him? Like, I can't fit anything in that car. You know, we're not going to be able to put oh, all my wow, stuff in that good. car. That's so good. the issue is not that you, you weren't ready to put your stuff in that car. The issue was that he showed up unprepared not ready to receive the stuff that you aren't going to give him. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and it, it goes <laughs> back to good, Pastor Jamie. Yeah, it That's goes back good. to what you're saying, man. Like we, I feel that strong. You know, we just we have to be ready to receive the blessings. Like like you said, the scripture says we have to enlarge our tents. We have to be ready. God is always ready to pour out. He's always ready to move. He's always ready to heal and always ready to bless. But are we ready to receive it? Amen. And guys, you know what? And like I, I just want to say this because I don't want nobody to feel condemned. You know, we all struggle in our faith guys you know struggling in your faith is, is is part of the walk with the lord right you know the the bible says that a man came to jesus and he said lord i believe but help my unbelief that's right you know yeah. so there's going to be times that, that your faith is, is is struggling and you feel like you're down but i just want to come to you guys you know this morning i mean this afternoon this evening and even before we go to church you know guys I, let, let me just say this you know as, as we go back to church if you're coming to church you know you feel comfortable coming to church let's come with faith 
Right. Let's come believing, hey, you know what? Everything's going to work out. God's going to bless the church. Yes, you know that's what? right. We're, yes, we're going, that's into, we're going into a service with the pandemic still out there. But, hey, you know what, guys? One thing we should start praising God for is that the numbers are a lot lower yes, than what they were it. when we were going back to Amen. church. And so, you know what, guys? We need to start saying, hey, God can do it. It doesn't matter, hey, that that, that people are, are experiencing this COVID. Hey, God can protect us. God right. can watch over us. I, I, I love what David said. And I don't say this to be ugly, but I use this as an example. David said, though a, though a thousand may fall at my left side and 10,000 at my right, right side, David said what? It will not no, come, come near, near me. me. Amen. Come on, somebody. That's it. Yes. The Bible says that God will hide you under the shadow of his wings. Yes. The Bible says that David said, I will find refuge in the Lord. What right. is a refuge? Right. It's a place of protection. It's a place of safety. Right. It's a place of security, guys. Right. But sometimes we say, well, God can't do it because this is going on. Well, God can't do it because my finances are, are down. Well, God yes. can't use me because I suffer with sickness. How, how, how can God do this? No, yeah. you got to open your, 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 your tent. You got to open your heart and say, Lord, help me to see and to receive more right. in my life. Yes. That's Amen. Good, Pastor Let me show you a scripture. You know, the Bible says that God came to Sarah and Abraham. Abraham and Sarah could not have a baby. But I want you to pay attention to what God tells them in this scripture. Now, go with me, if you would, to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis, Genesis 18. chapter 18. Thank you, all guys, for all the likes and, and the and all the hearts. You know, as, as y'all are liking it and sharing all the hearts, I could just see y'all saying amen. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that again that's, in church. That's how we say amen online. Yeah, <laughs> amen. So notice, um, I hope I'm in the right scripture, Pastor Jamie. You said Genesis 18? Yeah. Let me see. Yes. Okay. I think. Yes. Genesis 18. Verse 9 through 15. Genesis 18, verse 9 through 15. Now look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, Then he said, Then they said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? Now the angel of the Lord, which I believe, the angel of the Lord is speaking. I believe it's a picture of God. It's God speaking to, yeah. to Sarah and he I mean to Abraham. So God tells Abraham, Where's your wife, Sarah? And he said to her, and he said, here, she's over here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. <laughs> so yeah. Sarah's over there. She being nosy, Jay. Right. <laughs> you know, Abraham, her husband's doing. out there having a, a, a meeting with God, and she's listening. Yeah. <laughs> and and look at what she says in verse. I mean, look at what happens in verse eleven. It says, "Now Abraham and Sarah were young, and youthful." Mm. No, well. that's not what the Bible says. <laughs> the Bible doesn't say they were young and youthful. Look what it says. It says, "Now Abraham and Sarah were old." Mm -hmm. It says, "Well advanced." in age Come and on, Sarah Jesus. had passed the age of child bearing. I'm going to say it again. Sarah had passed the age of child bearing. Yes. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself saying after I have grown old, shall I have pleasure? Shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also, <laughs> In verse 13, and the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh saying, shall I be surely bear a child since I am old? Yes. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Come on. Oh, I love that. Come on, Pastor Jesus. Jamie. Yeah. What does Sarah do? Sarah laughs. Mm -hmm. Sarah hears God saying, you're going to have a baby. But Sarah's old. Abraham is old. Guys, it, by the time Abraham and Sarah came out pregnant, they were about 90 and 100 years old. Right. I mean, by that time, you was old. Yes. I was going to say something <laughs> else, but a, I better not. You can't. You're not at the age of conceiving. You're not at the age of conception. <laughs> yeah. But So she laughs. She says, 
am I going to be able to please Abraham? Mm-hmm. That's basically what she's saying. Yeah. Am I going to be able to enjoy relations mm-hmm. with, with Abraham? She says, right. I'm too old. And, and the Lord hears her. And the Lord tells Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Mm-hmm. Why did why did Sarah? Why is Sarah surprised? Right. That, that, that she's going to come out pregnant. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? It says, it says in verse 14, at the appointed time, I shall return to you according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son. And then he goes on to say in verse 15, but Sarah denied it saying, I did not laugh for she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. <laughs> so notice what she did. She laughed and, and, and she says, and when God tells her, is anything too hard for right. God? And I wrote this down in my notes. Notice what God asked the question. God says, is there anything Anything too hard for God? Yes. I love that. It it, it wasn't about, Pastor Jamie, if it was going to be hard for Abraham and Sarah. Mm -hmm. That's good. See, guys, whenever God wants to bless us, we put the burden on ourselves sometimes. Mm. Yeah, Mm. God wants to bless me, but how how is he going to do it when I only work eight hours a day? Right. Right. How is God going to give me a blessing when I'm past the age of childbearing? Yes. How is God going to give me a baby when the doctor said it can't happen anymore? Right. How is God going to bless my finances and and give me all of these things that I want when my credit score Mm -hmm. is bad? Come on, somebody. What what do we do? We, We think that it's impossible for God because it's impossible for us. Right. But but the question that God asked Abraham is not if it was impossible for them, but if it was impossible or too hard for God. In right. other words, what I'm trying to say, guys, is that the burden, the weight, the, 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 the focus of Abraham and Sarah being blessed was to be put on God. Because wow. God was the one that declared the blessing. God was the one wow. that declared that they were going to come out pregnant. Wow. And guys, whenever God gives you a promise in his word, you don't need to carry the burden of trying to fulfill it, trying to accomplish right. it, trying to figure out how it's going to happen. You just stand and you believe what God mm. said and watch That's it good. come to pass. Amen. Pastor yes. Jamie. Yes. Amen. <laughs> you know, it, it's so true, Pastor Larry, because whenever we are faced with a situation or a problem that we have to overcome yes yes we immediately i don't know why it's why it's like this guys but we immediately just jump into like self effort like what am i going to do to fix this what 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 do i need to do or what mm-hmm. does or or what does god want me to do about this or and we 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 default into panic mode and that's not a good place to be because it's like the scripture says the battle is not ours come on but it's the lord's and so same thing in the old testament guys whenever the children of israel would go up to battle pastor larry the lord told them if you keep your eyes on me if you keep worshiping me if moses leaves his hands up and stay and keeps worshiping me then the battle will be won because it's not your battle it's Mm. my battle yes you see we are supposed to as christians we are supposed to look at our situation and our issues that way so when you have a sickness in your body, you have to say, this this isn't my burden to carry. I'm casting my care and my worries on the Lord. Yes. And Lord, you know, I don't know how you're going to do it, Lord, but if God doesn't do it, it won't get done. <laughs> if God don't do it. I'm casting it on him. <laughs> that, that's just the mindset that we got to take, guys. Like, you know, the next time you run into a situation or, you know, you're, you're faced at a, at a crossroads or anything, stop. It, it, you might panic a little bit and you might get a little scared, but... You know, just hunker down and just say, God, I- I'm putting this in your hands. You know, this is what you want me to do. I'm in you. And, you know, we're we're one. And you said to cast your cares on you. So I'm giving you this problem. And I know, Father, you're going to work it out no matter what. Even if it seems impossible to me or if it seems impossible to the doctors or the people around me. Yes, Lord. It's possible with you because like this scripture says, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. You know, yeah. guys, and I was thinking about this. Pastor Jim, we were talking about this the other day. Because, you know, e- even me as a pastor, you know, and, and, yeah. and, you know, I'm not I'm nobody better than y'all or Pastor Jamie. You know, none of us are better than y'all just because right. we preach. We all wrestle with our faith. But I remember you guys whenever we bought well, whenever we got the church building that we're in now. Yeah. I mean, we started knocking on walls. Walls were knocked down. And 
our goal was to try to save the floor right. so that we didn't have to spend so much money. But how many of you guys know whenever you start a remodeling project, you're probably going to spend more than you have set in a budget Always. Always. and uh, <laughs> things are going to come up. And yeah. I remember whenever we needed to go get a floor and we went to the, the local pl place here in town to get a floor and, you know, they were showing us, you know, the floor and we picked out a floor and, um, we asked them, you know, how much is it going to be, you know, and, and they, you know, they told us how much it was going to be. And, and our goal and what we wanted was to pay it off in a year right. before the interest kicked in. And man, you guys, when they told us how much it was going to be a month, I was like, no Hell? way. Like, there is no way that right. we're going to be able to do that. Uh, plus, we have our regular church bills. Plus, you know, we have our our our, our uh, loan to the bank yeah. for purchasing the building that we're we're trying to pay off, and then on top of that, we had another bill. We had to get church insurance because mm -hmm. you know they they don't let you have a church without no insurance. Yep, and so we had all of these things, and so it was like we had our regular bills, and then it was like we had a construction bill, and then on top of that, there was another bill. Yeah. And now the floor bill. And guys, I was like overwhelmed. Right. And Pastor Jamie, you know, <laughs> Pastor Jamie was so yeah. graceful. He's like, God's going to take care of it. God's going to take care of it. And, and, and guys, why was I fluttered? Why was I worried about it? Because I was basing it on what I saw in the bank. Right, right. I was basing it on what I knew we had as a church and what I knew we could afford as right. a church. So, I did what I'm telling you not to do right. is that I said, yeah, God can do it, but he's going to have to work with this. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you guys, God is not limited to your resources. Yeah. Right. God is not limited to That's what's it. in your hand. Yes. God is not limited to anything that you have before you or what you don't have because God can do greater than that. Right. Because the burden is not for you to say, how Lord your, your, your burden is to say, there is nothing too hard for God. And you know Amen. what, guys? Whenever whenever we, we pay the floor off at the church, it was like nothing. Like there was, yeah. I mean, it, like, it didn't even affect us yeah. uh, financially. Why? Because God took care of it. Yes. In other words, God already saw the need. God knew we were going to need that floor. But God just said, keep trusting me. That's right. You got to. Yes, it's another bill. But do you believe I can do it? And, I, and, and then, you know what I had to realize, guys, is I had to realize this is that I know God is not limited to my resources. I know that God is not limited to what I have or what I don't have. And right. I'll give you an example, Pastor Jamie. Yeah. The Bible tells us, you guys, that God sent a raven mm -hmm. to feed Elisha yep. in the book of first Kings. Yeah. Now think about that, Pastor Jamie. I just want you to help me with this. God sent a raven to feed Elijah. That tells us two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, the boy didn't have no food. That's right. Yeah. He didn't <laughs> nothing. have nothing around him. Mm -mm. And number two, if God didn't send a raven, then that boy was going to die. Yes. So right. you know what? Elijah's Elijah being fed, Elijah's need for food was not based on if Elijah had a, 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 a bow and arrow to kill an animal, right. to kill a bear or to kill a pig or something like that. No, God said, if I have to send a raven to right. take care of you, I'll send a raven. So yes. what did God do? God stepped. Listen to me. I'm going to say it slow. God stepped out of Abraham's resources and God brought in his own resources to provide for the need yes, I love of it. Elisha. Yeah. And if God can step out of Elisha's resources to take care of him, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes. God can step out of your resources wow. to take care of you and to provide for you. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I was also thinking, Pastor Larry, about the, uh, the manna from heaven. You know, when the children of Israel yes. were walking in the wilderness, uh, the Bible says they didn't have any food. You know, of course, they're in the wilderness. And what happened? The Lord rained down bread from heaven, literally came down, and they, they had food every day because of that. He supernaturally took care of them. And uh, there was another part, another time where they didn't have water. So they hit the rock, and out came water. You know, so he God always makes a way where there seems to be no way. You know, I just believe that, you know, if God, if God can create 
everything that we see out of nothing. You know, he can literally just create something out of nothing. I believe that we don't have anything to worry about, Pastor Larry, because all of our needs can be met at at that very moment. And sometimes it seems like it's like at the... Uh, it's, it's almost seems like God waits till the last minute sometimes, you know, to give us exactly what we need. Sometimes that happens. So don't get discouraged and don't feel like, well, maybe God isn't going to come through for me, or maybe this is too hard for God, or maybe God doesn't want me to have this or whatever. Don't get discouraged and just continue to believe that God can create something out of nothing in any kind of situation you're in. You know, I've, I've known people, Pastor Larry, that have been in situations where it's like, in order for them, it's it's it would be impossible for them to overcome that situation, but they still overcome that situation, and it's all because of God. Amen. You know, I, I'm thinking of another story. You know, the Bible says this. It says that when, how many of y'all remember when uh, Mary was going to have baby Jesus? And the Bible go. tells us that when Mary was going to have baby Jesus, she asked the Lord one thing. And I'm going to read it to you real yeah. quick because of time. But whenever you get a chance, I want you to read Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1 and 34 through 35. And I'm going to read it to you real quick because of time. So this is Mary. Look what she says. She says, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? So what is Mm. she asking the Lord? God, how am I going to have a baby when I when I haven't had been with a man? In other words, Mary couldn't see herself being pregnant because of her own resources. We'll say right, it that way. Right. Because she didn't have the resources, she was not going to be able to have a baby. But God is amazing. Because yeah. look at the next statement in in, uh, in verse 35. Well, I told you all to read it later, but I'm already reading it. So it says in 35, it says, And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Come on. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of God. Mm. So God answers her. She tells she tells God, wow. how am I going to have a baby when I don't know man, a man? And God tells her it's going to happen through the power of of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes. So yes. what I'm here to tell you guys Come is on. how is God going to bless you through the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. That's good. Pastor Larry, I don't have That's no good. resources. It's through the power, power of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes. Pastor Larry, the doctor said I'm, mm. I'm, I'm getting worse. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, right. I don't think my marriage is going to make it. It's through the power, power of the, of Holy, the Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yes. Don't yes. limit God to your resources. Let, so good. Step out of yourself. Open your heart big and say, God, you're a big God. Yes. God, you yes. God, you can do more than I can imagine. God, my little loaf of bread is, is nothing. You can multiply it. You can, right. do it. you can do greater than I can imagine. The yes. Bible says... In Ephesians chapter 3. Let's go there real quick, Pastor James. Okay. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. All righty. Ephesians chapter 20. And look what he says. I'm going to read it from the screen, Pastor Jamie. Let's, okay. see, let's see what it says. It says, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, to him. Now, this is God. This is about God. To him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in In us. I love it. What is it saying? God is able to do above and beyond Mm. what you can think. Think mm-hmm. or you can ask, right, right. guys. You know what? You're over there saying, "God, I just <laughs> want a little, a little one bedroom apartment." Yeah. You see, God can give you a house. That's right. <laughs> God, I just yes. want this little bitty apartment. God wants to give you a property. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Land. God, I just want a little job at McDonald's. God wants to give Why? you a business. Yes. Why? Because God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or or imagine. I always tell people this, if whatever you can imagine for your life, God can do greater than that. Yes. Whatever you can ask him, you know what God says? God says, is that all? (laughs) Is that all you're going to ask me for? 
Is, right. is, is there anything hard for me? And you know what we say? Well, God, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Pastor Larry, you know that. I don't want to ask God for that because, mm. I mean, that's a lot. Right. That, that's too much, Pastor Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> but no, guys, it, nothing is too much for God yes. because he's able to exceed it. He's able to do abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Yes, you yes, say amen. Yeah, uh, no, just, you know, don't, uh, it's like that old, so who sings that song? It's it's a secular song, but it says, don't stop believing. I don't know. Journey. Yeah, journey. journey. I was going to say journey. I didn't want to be wrong, though. Yeah. Don't stop believing, right? It's amen. A good song. Yes, it is a good song. Yeah, God, don't ever put limits on God. You know, don't don't ever stop with, with just that, what, what you're thinking. You know, the scripture clearly says that he just read that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So any, you know, whatever whatever it is that you might need, like like the example with, with your grandpa, like we were talking about, Pastor Larry, all we can think of is like, I need healing or he needs healing. But God says, no, I don't want to just give him healing. I want to bring a youthfulness back to him, yes. a refreshing back to him. Yes. I want to bring that, you know, that back to him. So always, always have that, that uh, ex- expanding your tents kind of mentality, able to receive whatever God wants to bless you with, you know, cr- uh, pray those, those crazy, those, those crazy prayers, those audacious prayers, you know, speak it over your life. And just be ready to receive all that God has for you. Amen. And, and guys, you know, everything that we read, I want y'all to just kind of, we're going to close here in a second, but, but I want to show you something. But just let me say this as yeah. a review, Amen. because it's going to be a foundation for what I'm going to say next. In Genesis 18, we read about Sarah and Abraham, right? Yes. And what did, what did, he te- what did God tell them? Is anything too hard for God? Mm. So it was all about God. Right. In order for them to have that baby, it was all about God. When, when Mary was, was going to have baby Jesus, she said, how can I do it? He said, it's going to be through the Holy Spirit. Power of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be through the Holy yeah. Spirit. In Ephesians that we read, it said that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Pastor Jamie, can you bring it up real quick? Yes. I want to show you something I forgot to mention at the end. Guys, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you have your Bible or you're looking at the screen, look at the last part of verse 20. It says... That he's able to do anything above uh, and beyond what we can ask or think. Mm -hmm. Notice the end. According to the power that works Works. within us. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit. Right. So in other words, God told God told Abraham, it's up to me. God told Mary, it's up to me. Right. God tells you in wow. Ephesians 3.20, it's all me. Yes. It's, right. it, it, it's according to the power that works within Amen. you. Yes. That's how God's going to do exceedingly Amen. abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Now, I'm saying all that to say this. Now, Pastor Jamie, I, I want to go back for just a second to the yeah. story of Abraham and Sarah because there is a nugget of truth within this story that mm. is going to blow your mind, or at least it blew my mind when I was studying this. Now, this is not a new revelation. I've known this for a long time, but I'm going to share it with you guys because I believe it's going to help you in my message. Amen. Now, Pastor Jamie, let's start with Abraham. Now, remember, it was Abraham and Sarah. Go ahead. Now, notice I put Abraham. 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 Mm-hmm. Now, it says Abraham, but it says Abram, right? Right. Now, before God gave Abraham a baby, his name was Abram. Right. Okay. Before he had a baby, his name was Abram. Okay. Now notice how many letters are in Abram. One, two, three, four. Now, this is Hebrew. The Hebrew reads from right to left. So don't read it like English. You read it from the right to the left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're not going to focus on every letter because we don't have time to do that. But every letter in the Hebrew language, you guys, has a pictogram. And what I mean by a pictogram is every letter has a picture. Mm -hmm. In other words, we like us Americans, we have. A, B, C, D, you know. Right. And and sometimes we have pictures to represent our letters, right? Like I remember in school we would say A is for? Apple. Apple. Mm-hmm. B is for? Bear Baby. or boy, depend, right? 
or baby. I, think I learned baby. You learned yeah. baby. Okay, yeah. B is for baby. Yeah. Okay. So that's the way it is in the Hebrew language. But pay attention. So God, God gave God. That's His name. But when God told him that he was going to have a baby with Sarah, watch this, you guys. God changed his name from Abram. Go ahead to the next slide, Pastor Jamie. To Abraham. Mm -hmm. Do y'all see that? So before he had his children, he was Abram. Mm -hmm. But whenever he came, he was going to be a, 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 a baby daddy. Right. <laughs> God yes. changed his name to Abraham. Abraham. Mm -hmm. Now notice another letter is added in the name. Now for the time being, that letter, I put it in red because it's added to the name of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I, I, I highlighted it red is because that letter has a numeric value of five. Okay. Mm. It's a numeric value of five. And the number five in the Bible represents grace. Yes, yes, so watch. So what am I saying? I'm saying this. Whenever Abraham was going to become a father, God gave him grace mm. so that he could become right. a father. Now, but Jamie, go to the first slide back to Ab the first okay. Abraham. When when he when when he didn't have any children, there was no grace there. Right. But the moment God told him, I'm going to give you a baby. What did God do? God dropped. Go ahead. Pastor Jamie. God dropped his grace so that him and Sarah can produce. Wow. A baby. Yeah. Grace. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is a uh, symbol for grace. That is the symbol for grace. Yeah. OK. Let's look at Sarah. Sarah. Man, guys, I hope this is a blessing. You bless me. Yeah. Now, now notice Sarah. Sarah's name, when when God called, when God picked her, her name was Sarai. Okay, Sarai is what three letters from right to left. One, two, three. Right. Do y'all see that three letters? But God also changed her name whenever she was going to have the baby with Abraham. Mm -hmm. God told Abraham her name will no longer be. Sarai, go ahead, Pastor Jamie, but her name will be Sarah. Grace. And what did God do? <laughs> God changed the last letter. What is right. the last letter? It's grace. grace. In other words, in order for a, you can pull it back to us, Jamie. Okay. In order for Abraham and Sarah to have a baby, God had to give them his grace, grace. because his grace his power was the only way that they could have only the baby. Yes, yeah. right. <laughs> yes. Now I'm saying all that yeah. to read one more scripture, Pastor Jamie, yeah. real quick. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Okay. Chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Verse 32. Now, so now, brethren, I commend you to the word to God mm -hmm. and to the word of his grace. Watch this, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Now, the word inheritance there, it means a blessing. Yeah, it means a possession. It means to have a hold of something. Mm. Now, how are we going to have an inheritance? It tells you by the grace of God. Yes. And, and it's all, it's to all those who are sanctified. It's, it's the same thing that God said to Abraham. God said, you're no longer going to be Abram. You're going to be Abraham. Abraham. I'm going to yeah. give you my grace to have a baby. God told Sarah, you're no longer going to be Sarai. You're going to be Sarah, right. which is what? He added the letter for grace, grace into her name. When God gave Abraham grace, when God gave Sarah grace, they came out pregnant. And guys, when we give, when we get the grace of God into our lives, right. God gives us an inheritance. What is that? A possession, a blessing, yes. something Amen. that now mm. belongs to us. But how was it given to us? By the mm. grace of God. But we have to know 
that so that we can realize it's not by our works. It's not by our resources. Guys, it's all God. All you have to do is open your heart and just say, Lord, I receive it, not mm. based on my ability, but based on your grace. And yes. God, my, my, my heart and my arms are wide open to receive all that you have for me. Yes. In Jesus' name. Pastor Jesus' Jay, name. Yes. Amen. That was good. Thank you, Pastor Lord. Larry. Hallelujah. Yeah. Man, I felt that. I won't say I won't say much, Pastor Larry. Just, you know, I, I love how you ended it right there, how we just need to depend on the Holy Spirit. And it's wh- when you don't have or when you're lacking something in, in your relationship with God or in your personal life, <coughs> there may be times where it seems like it's just never going to happen. You know, we always go th- we, we, we always go through that and we all experience that. And those are the times where you need to be rooted and grounded in your faith and just be ready to say, Lord, even if it has to come by your Holy Spirit, mm. even if even if it has to come through your the word of your grace, like this scripture said, which is able to build us up, you know, I'm going to depend on that. So, you know, let this be just an encouragement to you guys today. You know, don't 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 have an attitude of of doubt or anything like that. Whenever you you go through lack or anything like that, but just just continue to walk in faith and just continue to expand. You know, like like we the scripture read at the beginning, continue to expand your tent and and your life so that you can receive what God wants to do for you. Amen. So that was good, Pastor Larry. Amen. I enjoyed that. Amen. Yes, guys. So let's just pray and then we'll let you go. Amen. And, and uh, you know, if you have a prayer request, just give it to the Lord right now. We're going to stand in agreement with you guys yeah. that God's going to meet every need. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, we thank you, God, for all those that are watching tonight yes, again, Lord. Lord. And we thank you for the word that you gave us today. Lord, I pray that we would enlarge our hearts to receive, God, that we would not limit you in any way. We won't limit you with our resources. We won't limit you by what we see, by what we feel, by what we think, and even by what we hear, Lord. But we're going to focus our eyes on you, God. Lord, if you can do it for Sarah, you can do it for us. Lord, if you did it for Abraham, you can do it for us, God. Lord, we look to your grace. We know that it's not by our works, by our efforts. It's only by your grace, Lord. And so today, Father, I pray that everybody that's watching this message today would just allow your Holy Spirit Spirit, to come in and to just enlarge their hearts, enlarge their capacity to receive. Lord, that they would have a a bigger shopping cart, Lord, so that they could feel to overflow. God, that you want to do exceedingly abundantly above all that they could ever ask or think lord god that you want to give them not just a healed body but you want to restore their health lord yes, you want lord. you want them to feel young yes. to feel rejuvenated god lord that we would enjoy our youth lord for long Lord, I thank you, Lord, that just the way you renewed Sarah's youth, you are renewing our youth, Lord. You said, God, that you would renew our youth like the eagles, Father. And so right now, Lord, we just we just push away every wall, every barrier, every mindset, Mm. Lord. Lord, we remove every voice out of our life that would try to Mm, stop us from being able to receive the much more that you have for us. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. God, Lord, we take the limits off of you. We take the the requirements, Lord, based on our resources off of you. And we just say, Lord, whatever you have for our lives, we want it. Lord, we want you to pour it out. We, we stand open. We stand under an open heaven, Lord, that you're raining down your blessings. And Lord, if there's any needs, I pray you minister to the needs. Lord, heal yes, bodies, in Jesus name. move in people's situations, move in their family, their finances, yes. whatever they're going through. Lord, I believe you're going to do it to the fullest in Jesus, Jesus mighty Jesus name. name. Amen and amen. amen. Guys, thank you so much for watching tonight. I pray that y'all were blessed. I think this is such a great way to go out. Yes. I on a Wednesday so. night. Yes. And so, guys, be with us Sunday morning. We will be on at 11 o'clock mm-hmm. from the yes. church. So, y'all, tune in. If you can't make it, if you plan to come, please remember to read the uh, guidelines that will be posted tomorrow. Take a look at them. Take a screenshot, whatever, so you can remember them. And we love you guys, and we look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. We'll see you guys then. Have a great week.